In his victory speech, Pierre Polyev was all about the economy and the high cost of living for Canadians. They need a prime minister who hears them and offers them hope that they can aff again afford to buy a home, a car, pay their bills, afford food, have a secure retirement, and God forbid, even achieve their dreams if they work hard. They need a prime minister who will restore that hope, and I will be that prime minister. Polyev promises to make Canada the freest country on earth by limiting government's role in people's lives. That message has garnered him record support. He swept nearly every riding in the country, even in Quebec. More people voted in this leadership race than in any other in Canadian history. We are both seniors and present government didn't do nothing for us. Zero. Exactly. So let's hope for the better future. Whether it's from housing, inflation or cost of living. And right now, three of those, those three um, have a high effect on my generation because that they can't afford to live, say, for example, in a house in the suburban areas. Canadians are, are coming to terms that this uh, government that has been in, in, in government for seven years now, it's tired, it's lack of good ideas. At the Liberal retreat in New Brunswick the day after the win, the party was asked what they make of Polyev pointing the finger at them for this country's inflation problem. Canada is uh, experiencing, you know, an, an increase in the cost of living as a result um, of many factors, the war in Ukraine, um, supply chain disruptions, but these are global phenomena. And um, as a, a country, we need to have serious leadership at a time like this. Thank you very much. The Conservatives believe that person is Pierre Polyev. He'll have his first meeting with his caucus Monday morning. Marina von Stackelberg, CBC News, Ottawa. Let's bring in our chief political correspondent, Rosemary Barton. And, and Rosie, should we expect Polyev as leader to adopt a different tone than we saw in the leadership campaign? Listen, there isn't going to be a big pivot from, from Poiliev. He said as much. We should probably believe him. These are his ideas. These are his values. He believes in freedom, small government, what he would call an anti-elitist agenda. There are some things you didn't hear, though, in his speech last night, things that he talked about during the leadership campaign, firing the governor of the Bank of Canada, support for the so-called freedom convoy, his interest in cryptocurrency. Doesn't mean he's walked away from those ideas because part of that is strategic. It's an attempt to appeal to some of the People's Party of Canada voters. The Conservatives lost in the last election. That would be important to winning the next one. So Poiliev understands, though, that last night was an introduction to a broader audience of Canadians and that his focus needed to be on some of his central issues, the economy chief among them. And what does all this mean for the Liberals? Well, I mean, I think a united Conservative Party with an aggressive, experienced leader is definitely going to make things more challenging for the government. One thing the Liberals have been really good at in the past is framing Conservative leaders. Those issues I was talking about before that weren't in the speech are the very ones the Liberals will focus on to try and paint Poiliev as a leader who is quote-unquote extreme. Public opinion polls show, though, Ian, the economic criticism of this government has been damaging for them, and Poiliev's going to hammer them on that issue. We're likely going to see some announcements this week from the government to help Canadians more deal with the cost of living. But that's not going to stop the Conservatives from pushing very hard on this issue. The Liberals, of course, though, may have some time on their side. They have that deal with the NDP that could prevent an election until 2025. And as we heard from the Prime Minister last week, he's made it very clear that he plans to be there for that one too. Great work this weekend. Nice to speak with you, Rosemary. Thanks, Ian. Appreciate it.